Bonjour. Good morning. For today's video, we're going to be doing a continuation discussion on the WaveShear 1.2 inch diameter round LCD display. This particular display, I've done a previous video on it uh, where I explain one of the graphics libraries uh, that uh, a fellow programmer made and contributed to the community. And his name is Russ Hughes, and I've got a link to his uh, the information for his library. Uh, without it, truly, I was not real happy at all with how fast I could uh, manipulate uh, data on the display. So it is really just with a tremendous amount of appreciation I extend to Russ in his efforts, especially to share it with uh, everyone on uh, the Internet. Now, before we get into the code here, because most of this discussion will be a continuation uh, of our previous discussion, uh, but what I'm focusing on here is a look and feel that I wanted to get with this tachometer project I'm working on. I wanted the digits uh, showing the numerical representation of the RPM uh, to be in a seven-segment type display. Uh, years back, we used a lot of seven-segment LEDs to display numbers, and I really like that look and feel. It's uh, kind of retro and nostalgic, um, and uh, they still are used today, uh, perhaps not as much as they should be, but we've got some really wonderful LCD displays to replace them as well. Let's take a look at what this uh, library or what this uh, font is going to look like in action. Now you'll start out, uh, I'm just going to display uh, some basic numbers here slowly, uh, just so you can get an idea of the clarity and the size. And then when we get to this point, it'll take off and it's printing out uh, numbers as fast as it can, counting by, I believe, uh, uh, an amount of 123 per iteration, uh, and so on. And it goes really, really fast. Now, the really nice part about this, it looks good. Uh, the, the messages or the digits don't just simply blank out, uh, but you actually see the changing of the digits and the different segments on each digit, which really, for me, got me the look and feel that I wanted. Uh, just before we go into the code, I want to take you down a couple of documents that I created in preparation for this, and we'll do that here on the bench as well. What is shown here is a seven-segment uh, display. There are seven segments, uh, typically on, on the LCD unit. It's labeled S1 through S7, and you turn on and off these segments to uh, change the, the look so that it's either a, a number zero or a number one, two, three, etc. Now, if we were to just use a single pixel line, the, the font on screen would look terrible. It's too, uh, too narrow to be really visually uh, impactful, so to speak. So the way I handled that is for each segment, I created five lines, a center line, and then on either side, another line and another line after that in each a pixel further from the center. So you get this broad line uh, representing the character that we're showing. Now, I laid this out in pixel units so that I would have some numbers from which to work from. Uh, as long as I've got an origin point uh, from either left, corner, lower left corner, upper left corner, really doesn't matter. As long as I've got an origin point, it's very easy to plot this out on screen and shift the location of it so you can get multiple digits displayed. And that's what all these numbers represent. They represent uh, from the bottom going up each of the uh, heights for each line, how many pixels, and then from left to right, how many pixels to each endpoint of each line. With that, it's real easy to put that into code. Now, figuring out which segment to turn on and off, it just took a minute to create uh, a little diagram here, a little truth diagram, I guess we could call it. Let me get some of the other notes out of the way so we can focus on what's here. Um, what we've got, I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven along across the top representing the digits. And then along the left-hand side is my wonderful uh, ability to draw a seven-segment character. 
And based on that, I know which one of the segments or which segments to turn on or off to get that character shape. And that's what all this information is. So, for example, if I needed uh, the character 4, uh, segment 1 is off, 2, 3 is on, 4, 5 is off, 6, 7 is on, and so forth. And that's how I created uh, the font that I wanted for this device. Now let's go into the code and look at it here. Uh, up in the comment area, I've got the usual comments. Uh, all that will be familiar from the previous one. Our libraries that we're using in this program, uh, the SPI interface, same as it was in the previous uh, video. And then the, the new code starts up here um, where we're going to be talking about this, uh, which this one is plotting the actual lines to make up the display. This function is deciding which segments to display. That covers exactly what I just talked about. This decodes the uh, numeric or the integer value, decodes it into a string, uh, and breaks it down character by character. But we're going to start all the way at the bottom here. Uh, we clear the screen by filling it with a color, in this case black. I'm using the, the character's RPM for revolutions per minute. Remember, this is uh, going to end up being an attackometer project coming up very soon. And I'm presetting it to zero speed. And then I'm going to display that at uh, this x, this y coordinate, uh, with a scale of 1. And uh, let's see, the 5 is character space. Okay, 5 pixels spacing. And uh, again, here I'm going to set RPM to a 0 value, go into a loop, uh, counting up to just over 10 thousands. 10,000 RPM, displaying it at that coordinate with the same parameters, and incrementing by 9,999 and sleeping for a second in between each one of those. And then further down, uh, I'm going to start out again back at zero uh, and keep going until the RPM is, uh, as long as it's less than 90,000, and we'll display that value at the same location, but this time I'm just counting up by 123, which uh, makes it really right a lot of times, which is why it gets that really nice looking feel. And there's no sleep in between each one of these. It just goes and goes. And uh, we'll run it again. And we can see that up on the screen. And again, I really think there's just exceptional clarity, and we're just looking at this uh, on a, a rather inexpensive webcam. So it's really not doing uh, this display justice, especially with regard to color uh, rendering and so forth. Okay, so now let's dig into this a little bit further. Um, the first thing we're going to do is look at this line here, display the value, the value being our RPM at this X coordinate, that Y coordinate. That is the base coordinate uh, for the first digit. After that, we have to add in our spacing and our scaling, etc. And that starts out in this function here. Uh, it, it's going to take X, Y, S, uh, the character space, S being scale, and then value, and that's the RPM value. We're going to uh, convert the character, convert the value, which is integer, into a string, pad it with some leading zeros, and then we're going to uh, truncate it to exactly six digits. That's what these three lines do. And then I'm going to say, for, for need of a, va a variable, number of digits equals the length of that string, Total width in pixels is the number of digits times 28. The character is 28 pixels wide, uh, plus the character space uh, uh, times the number of digits minus 1, because you don't have a space at the far end of it. We're going to start uh, with character number 0. And while character number 0 and character number 
is less, while character number is greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to the number of digits minus one. In other words, we're iterating through that list of uh, characters. Uh, we're going to increment the counter. Uh, we're going to obtain the digit first, increment the counter, and then we're going to say show that digit. And that digit will be shown uh, using this particular function, which is going to receive uh, the location and scale and the digit. And it, depending on which digit it is, it will go through and create a list in segments that knows which segment to turn on of the seven segments. And for every digit, of course, that would be different. We get down to this function call, which will actually plot the whole character at x, y, s, and the segments list. We go up here, and that is this particular function. And we're going to plot the digit at x, y, scale, and these segments uh, being either on or off. I'm going to define a couple of colors, and then we're going to go through and for each segment, make a decision if it's on or off, and then set the drawing colors. Remember, we will have to erase any existing uh, data that's on the screen. If we erase the whole screen, you get this real strong flickering effect. So it is much, vi much better visually to erase just the segments of each character. And that's why this kind of gets a little bit complicated, but it yields a much better looking display. Uh, so if it's displaying it, we're going to set the colors. Otherwise, we're just going to set it to the background color. And then we plot the five lines that make up each individual segment, specifying their colors. And this just repeats seven times for each of the seven segments. And that's all there is to that function. We get back down here to this area of the code, and we're just going through character by character, character doing the exact same thing, and then shifting the X position by 28 pixels plus the character spacing number of pixels. And that goes through and draws the whole six digits very, very fast, very efficiently. Now, if you did uh, really pay attention to the coloring up here, um, I had planned to have the outline of each segment a different color than the inner three lines of it. And unfortunately, it really didn't turn out well on this display. The lines are so thin that really differentiating between that outline color and then the core colors didn't really play out well. So setting them to the same value really worked best in this particular case. Uh, other than that, this is actually kind of a pretty flexible uh, couple of functions where you can uh, utilize it uh, in different applications besides just a tachometer. But it really does work well for displaying uh, numeric values. Now we'll run through it one more time and then we'll wrap this up. All around, I really like how, how clear and crisp this display is. It's got a beautiful uh, dark background. Uh, the characters are, relatively speaking, pretty bright, uh, so the graphics do really well. And its uh, response for uh, printing over it is exceptionally good as well. Of course, it is only 240 pixels by 240 pixels, so it can do a pretty quick uh, refresh rate while it's plotting characters and so forth. I think that'll wrap it up for this particular video. I'll probably have one more before we complete uh, the tachometer project. Uh, the next video will probably add a little more uh, capability to the graphics here and perhaps uh, start touching on incorporating into this code the code for the photoreflective sensor and doing a little testing there and then finally, the last video in this series will be doing all the 3D printing and assembly of the tachometer. And probably I'm going to incorporate uh, some other footage maybe from CNC router work that I had done because I wanted to change one of the components. I really didn't like the look and feel of a 3D printed component, so I used 
another tool to help out the looks a little bit. So that'll wrap it up for this video. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.